Will gold and silver be your safe harbor? There is so much going on right now, and we're getting big warnings from big-name players about what's coming down the pike for the U.S. economy. And what did the Fed do yesterday? We're going to dissect that whole situation and see what that means for the future of the silver and the gold price. We're going to have some fun. There's a ton to talk about. But, guys, we're getting big warnings from big players. Do you know who Jim Grant is? He writes the Grant Interest Rate Observer. That's what the smart people, the, the Wall Street people, read what this guy Jim Grant says. And he is putting out a harsh warning about what's going on in the U.S. economy right now. And he's talking about gold. And when he talks about gold, we know he's also talking about silver. I want to read you this one quick paragraph from Jim. I think this sums up the whole thesis behind precious metals. He says, I think gold ought, ought not trade as an inflation hedge, but as an investment in monetary disorder of which we surely have enough in the world right now. Monetary disorder. We're going to talk a lot about that during this video. So it's a question of getting people interested in the problem. And then the solution, if you want to go back and look at long cycles, it might be that the last 50 years since the end of the Bretton Woods and the end of the dollar's convertibility to gold, that that cycle is ending. It might be that paper money in the historian's retrospective, unicorn fart dust, paper money, like we talk about all the time, will seem to have been a failure in that the world is going to charge back on unconstrained central bank credit creation. It's unbelievable what's going on right now with the Treasury. Janet Yellen, we're going to touch on that as well and unconstrained sovereign borrowing. <laughs> oh, the United States, we only have $33 trillion in debt. Maybe that's one way to look at it. It's the way I tend to look at these things longer term, historical trends, and 50 years of money uh, in, the, in the eyes of history is essentially just a blink of the eye. So what Mr. Grant is saying, and, and again, and he is a super high-respected guy on Wall Street. He's on CNBC all the time. He's saying that these last 50 years, and we've talked about that. It's been about my whole lifetime. I don't know how old you are. I'm 53 years old. But essentially, my whole lifetime, we've been off the gold standard. And what Jim Grant is saying, and he's more of an interest rate macro guy, is the fact uh, is the fact that gold gold is the is the thing number one and we know that includes silver as well but also that this last 50 years although it seems like everything to most of us if you're 60 years old 70 years old 40 years old no matter how old most of us are we're going to fall within that category that basically our entire adult lives we've been living in a fairyland a unicorn fart dust land a land where the dollar was not backed by anything maybe oil but even that's falling apart right now go back and watch yesterday's live stream and i've put out some videos the petrodollar system china the bricks they're moving away we've been living in a fantasy land and it seems normal to us because that's all we really know now we pulled our head out of the sand we're doing the hard work right we're willing to really examine what's going on most people don't but what jim grant and he's almost 80 years old by the way is saying is that it was just a mirage so while it feels like do you feel that way sometimes I mean, like, we're, we're so ingrained in the system and how things are that it could never actually not work, right? Like, people like my parents, who are in their 70s and 80s, they're like, oh, my, our money's safe in the bank, you know? And I think, oh, I hope you're right. But just because something's always been that way during our lifetime, our experience doesn't mean that it won't change. And guys, when we look at the big picture of what's going on, but that's not all. But wait, there's more. There's even more because we have Stan Drunkenmiller, Druckenmiller, Stanley Druckenmiller. He's another one. Like, you know, everybody knows Warren Buffett. I get tired of hearing about Warren Buffett. Warren, you know, I guess maybe Warren Buffett's smart. You can't argue with the guy's investment returns, no doubt about it. 
But there's a lot more smarter people out there. He's kind of like the the one the media has propped up over the last 20 or 30 years. Stan Druckenmiller, he managed uh, money for George Soros, one of the richest people in the world. For like 10 years, he managed George Soros' money. He made some of the big trades that made Big George his big money. Stan Druckenmiller is like flabbergasted with what's going on with our government, with the with the monetary and fiscal system where we're headed and we also have uh, bill ackman from pershing square billionaire he's betting against the u.s economy at this point people are waking up now let's talk about the fed our good old friend and i need to tell you i need to make an apology uh no not an apology because i always say i'm often wrong but i was wrong i thought we would have a big move up or down in the precious metals yesterday and it didn't really materialize so we heard from the fed okay let's talk about our friend jerome let's dissect what they're saying and what it means for the silver price and gold price if he's talking about financial conditions tightening guys you better believe they're tightening <laughs> because he doesn't tell the truth okay let's let's set that straight right now maybe 10 percent of what jerome powell says is the actual truth so we got yesterday it was what we expected zero percent nothing changed zero you know not a zilch no no change okay uh but if they're mentioning it you know it's bad what they're talking about now is that the market itself the 10-year bond yield being near five percent is doing a lot of the work for the fed Don't forget to hit that thumbs up. That helps get the word out to more and more people. Thank you to all you basement dwellers, my friends, for being here. But now, now, the, the, the prevailing consensus is that the Fed is done raising rates. Okay, let me give you some statistics. The last rate hike was in July. They haven't raised rates since July. Okay, we're already in November. That seemed, what is that, four months? Seems longer, doesn't it? <laughs> but it's four months. There's now an 80% chance that there will not, I said not, be a rate hike in December. Another pause in December. Don't we talk about watch what they do, not what they say. Because what they say is a bunch of balloon juice, as my mother used to say to me a lot when I would be fibbing to her. Full of balloon juice. There is a 37, 37 as of this morning, a 37% chance in the futures market where people bet big money on what the Fed's going to do, a 37% chance that at some point there will be another rate hike. But most people are also now predicting that we will have rate cuts by mid-year next year. So what? Eight months from now, seven months from now, we all know that can change in an instant. It happened back in 2018 when they had the repo crisis. They were raising rates and then all of a sudden they had to reverse course immediately, okay, or 2019. They can change super quickly. Remember, we haven't talked about this is fun, basement dwellers. We're having a good time this morning. We haven't talked about this one for a while. I, I, this I love my blood gets boiling when I talk about Jerome and Janet Yellen because Janet Yellen used to be the head of the Fed too. Now she's the head of the Treasury. How the heck did that happen? Huh? <laughs> Woof. Anyway, this gets our blood boiling. Because two and a half years ago, two years ago, you know what the Fed said? The Fed said they weren't going to raise rates until the end of 2023. Yes, I will ring the cowbell in one second because you've given us 100 thumbs up, but I want to rail on the Fed for a little bit first. Two years ago, two and a half years ago, the words coming out of the Federal Reserve's mouth were that we weren't going to raise rates till the end of 2023. Well, guess what, buttercup? basement dweller i shouldn't call you buttercup i'm buttercup i'm sensitive sally look the reality is they've raised rates faster than any other time in history thank you tony for the super chat my friend super appreciated we are they, the, the fed I'm, I'm gonna get to the point the fed said two years ago they weren't gonna raise rates okay until the end of 2023 here we sit at the end of 2023 and the fed has raised rates i don't know 11 times 
So we don't believe the Fed. That's the same Fed that told us inflation was not a problem. And then inflation was transitory. And then it was temporary. And now it's a big problem. The list goes on and on. And Janet Yellen, she's no better. Don't believe. That's what Drucker Miller, Drucker Miller's ripping into Janet Yellen. Have you seen this? Have you seen this? Stanley Drucker Miller, yeah, the big guy, the billion dollar man is saying like Janet Yellen should be fired because Janet Yellen made the one of the biggest blunders in the history, financial history of the United States. She didn't refinance all this debt when we had 0% interest rates. Now it's costing our government more to pay interest on the debt than they spend on the Defense Department. So it's screwy, guys. It's screwy. Let's regroup here. Let me take a deep breath. I'm sorry. I get really upset when we talk about the Fed, okay? Um, the market is like a drug addict right now, waiting, asking, when's the Fed going to cut rates? When the Thank you, Mary. <laughs> thank you, my thank you, very nice. Super chat. The market's like a drug addict. When's the Fed gonna cut rates? When's the Fed? We need a hit. We need a hit, right? We need the rates to be cut. So there's so much focus on what the Fed is going to do. That's gonna work in our favor as precious metals investors because when the pivot, the pivot, I hate that word, pivot, was so overused in the business community. Anyway, when the pivot when, when the market, when the general investors, when the sheeple, right, when they start to realize or when they start to think they see the pivot, there's going to be a wave coming into the precious metals. Absolutely no, about it, no doubt about it. Um, so the market's doing it for the Fed, right? Because the Fed knows things are slowing down. That the little bit, if they elude a little bit that things are slowing down, remember, he's like the CEO of the world of the of the US economy, let's just say right now, essentially. He's gonna be as positive as possible, right? Thank you, Kevin. Wow. Thank you for the super chats, guys. They're gonna be as positive as possible. So if they're starting to say there's financial tightening going on. Um, you know, there's a lot more going on. We know that. We'll cover that. We'll cover more of the doom and gloom later. Don't you worry. We need our daily dose of doom and gloom. But but uh, the market is doing it for them. Nobody wants to buy U.S. Treasuries. Right now, they're using the reverse repo smoke and mirrors account that the Fed has that they're pushing money out onto the banks to subsidize the United States government, that's going to be gone sometime between January and May of next year is my closest clo closest calculation. My closest, I don't know, closest calculation. That's what we, there's nobody wants to buy. The Chinese don't want to buy U.S. Treasuries. The Saudis aren't going to buy the U.S. Treasuries. The petrodollar, bye-bye. Bye-bye, petrodollar, right? It's getting very ugly. What's also very curious when we analyze what Jerome said yesterday, no talk about geopolitics or war going on in the world, right? Doesn't even mention it, how that will in fact uh, in, in affect inflation in other matters as well, okay? So don't forget this 4.9% GDP print for the third quarter, the unbelievable, that rang the bell. Ron's basement, us basement dwellers, we know that. I didn't ring the bell. Speaking of ringing the bell, sorry, Coin Shop Chris, I forgot. I'm going to ring this bell 10 times. That's my, that signifies to you. Thank you for being here and thank you for giving this a thumbs up. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, five, ten. Yes, I look funny when I ring the bell, and I feel funny, but I'm going to continue to do it because that's our thing we do here in the basement. All right. All right. Welcome. Thank you for being here, dwellers, fellow basement, fellow basement dwellers. Um, everything is going on because of debt. Let's be real, right? Like, we're silver and gold investors. We know what real means. You know what real metal, you know what real silver is. You know what real gold is. You know what real platinum is. Real. You can hold it in your hand. There's no counterparty risk. You're not relying on anybody else to pay you back or, or to perform some duty for that silver or gold to have its value. Everything, that big 4.95% 
GDP print was all based on debt, okay? It's temporary consumer debt, you know, right? Credit card debt at all-time highs. Susie was watching the T Today Show. I always call it Good Morning America and get in trouble. The Today Show this morning, even they're talking about the, the, the now how bad the debt problem is and how be careful with credit cards. Some credit cards are charging up to 30% interest. And then... You know, <laughs> I had to kind of laugh a little bit because I thought, well, I know that right now the the prevailing interest rate in Turkey, right? Their their uh, their 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 monetary authority has set the interest rate at thirty five percent. I thought maybe the people in maybe Turkey, the country, is borrowing the money they need to survive from Mastercard or Visa in the United States. I mean, isn't that how we operate? It's crazy what's going on right now. Now. Let's talk about doom to come, and that will be when the Fed pivots and when the price of silver and gold have their true price discovery. When I say price discovery, I mean value, value going way up. How many loaves of bread can you get for an ounce of silver? Right now, maybe 10. At some point in the future, you could possibly get 100 loaves of bread for an ounce, maybe 1,000. Who knows? Rafi Farber likes to talk about occasionally, doesn't talk about it all the time, but this you know little window of opportunity where you might be able to buy a little house for 100 or 200 ounces of silver. What's coming down the pack, pike, is the lag effect. Let's talk about the lag effect, okay? Because it's getting a little more, and, and Jerome even briefly touched on this yesterday. That's the cumulative effect of all these previous 11 interest rate hikes, okay? All right, now, it takes a little bit. Let me let me read this to you. This is from J.P. Morgan. It's a very brief but very critical. We hear this from J.P. Morgan's chief global equity strategist. Yes, that J.P. Morgan, the one that manipulates the price of silver. But nonetheless, we're going to listen to what their chief, the chief global equity strategist says. He thinks, I think there's a lag effect. Quote, and this time around in this cycle. The lag simply may be longer than what we're accustomed to sort of seen in prior cycles because of the unprecedented injection that we got during the cough cough C-19 period and because of a relatively healthy starting point for things like balance sheets. So what he's saying is that... <coughs> Oops, there I go coughing. What he's saying is, guys, the lag effect is real. Let's let's just briefly, basement dweller, that's one of our key terms we need to understand. The lag effect means the 11 interest rate hikes that the Fed did over the last 19 months, okay, they don't immediately impact the economy. It's like when you take an antibiotic, if you have a, a an infection of some sort, it takes a little time for it to take effect. Same thing with the interest rate hikes. It takes six to nine months, typically, for an interest rate hike for the effect of it to filter through the economy. And we are right now just in and entering the big storm, the big impact from all those, those hikes. And they're even going to be more delayed and more potentially potent, right, because of all the money printing. Think about this. Think how big the debt level is in the world. Mortgage debt, you know all the debt. Government debt, credit card debt, car debt, student loan debt. You know, ding-dong debt, all the debt. Ring, ding, ding-along. Now, there's debt everywhere. Massive. Trillions, right? It has a much... Interest rates going from 0 to 5% on that level of debt. $307 trillion in debt in the world. That has a much stronger impact going from 0 to 5 on that massive balance then it would if interest rates were 20%, but world debt total was only 30 trillion, like it was not too long ago. Now it has a massive impact. So we've got a delayed effect in the United States because of all the money printing, right? That for it to really hit the economy. But when it does hit, it's going to hit on a much higher balance and have a much more of an impact. And when it starts to be felt, right, it's going to be, you watch, the Fed is going to freak. Freaky deaky freak freak, okay? And they're going to change their stance and they're going to make easy money. And all the people, not us, because we already know, but all the other people that are 
a half asleep are going to be like, whoa, I need to, I need to get myself some real assets. I need to get my, my, some money, my wealth into real assets. And there's not going to be any silver or gold available. Very likely. Very, I've had this discussion now. It's been top of mind for me. Can you, can you say silver shortage? Silver gone? Okay, we just had a silver shortage within the last year. And when I say silver shortage, I get bombarded with, oh, you're a silver pumper or you're a, you're a, a, a paid shill or whatever. No, we just had one earlier this year, and that was in a minor black swan, right? A minor banking crisis that went on. If we have something major, guys, there's not a lot of silver coming out of the ground. We've covered that ad nauseum, but there's not a lot of capacity to make new silver products that are available to the average retail investor. There's a bottleneck. So when all the coin shops get cleared out, like they did <laughs> back in March and April of this year, the mints, the refiners, they can't just turn a switch and make like 10 times. No, there's a huge bottleneck, a huge shortage. It's a very delicate, like me, I'm, you know, I'm sensitive, delicate and sensitive market. I am delicate and sensitive. It's just the way I am, okay? I'm sorry I have to admit that to you, but I am. That's, that's me. Uh, I'm just like, maybe that's why I like silver, because the silver market's so delicate and sensitive. It's not going to take a lot. It's going to be very, very interesting. Let me get back up here, though. Maybe it was a, whoa, sip of, sorry about that. Scared myself. Maybe a sip of coffee. While I'm doing that, take a second. Please give this a thumbs up. That helps get the word out to more people, and we got a lot more to cover, and thank you for the super chats. Thank you for being here. We got a lot more to cover. In my never-ending quest to keep the viewers happy, I mute the microphone and keep my wife Susie happy, who I think might be on this live stream, so you don't have to listen to me gulp down the coffee. I got railed for that, and I'm trying to blink. That was the big thing, you know? I'm blinking for you. All right, let's get back to this. I'm off track. I'm, I'm just all over the place, but let's get back here. Um, <laughs> what they're waiting for. And tomorrow, I think it's tomorrow, I need to look it up, I'm sorry, but tomorrow we'll get employment data, okay? That's what they're waiting for. When the employment data goes down the tubes, when we start to see fewer jobs. Last month, we created 336 new uh, Uber and, and DoorDash jobs. We'll see how many second and third and fourth jobs are created this month. We're going to get that number tomorrow, but that's likely going to be one of the big catalysts for the metals prices. And let's realize, because that's what they're, sta they're standing on. Oh, we need to see the labor market. The reason why the labor market has to slow down because that'll decrease demand and that'll pull down. Well, yeah, let's send the whole damn country into an, a depression. That'll fix inflation. Nobody will have any money. That's real smart. Even, you know, non-Ivy League educated economists like us can figure that much out. So they're waiting on these employment numbers. We're going to get that tomorrow. That can have a big impact on the silver and gold price. I looked at gold. Let's talk about the gold and silver price right now. Right before I came on, it looked like gold was still hanging in there. The spot price is what I look at at around 1980 per ounce. We're fighting a good fight, guys. The next couple of weeks, I think, are going to be critical as to our ability to get the new all-time highs in the coming two months before the years. Our friend Buddy Rumble still calling for $30 silver on Christmas, right? Can it happen? It can, especially if silver catches up with gold. If gold hangs in here, right, continues. What it's doing right now is building a base. All the people that said, I'm going to sell, I'm going to get out before if gold ever gets to 2,000, around 2,000 an ounce, they're all selling. They're all selling. So we got to get, we got to work through all those people. And if we have some further catalyst, if tomorrow, for instance, these employment numbers that come out aren't so great, right, maybe shockingly low, 
I mean, what a bizarro world we live in. We don't, you know, maybe, you know, we need to go, We need, maybe we need to call DoorDash and say, have you been hiring a lot of people? Because in America now, you need to have two or three jobs just to survive, just to have a normal middle class existence. But that will be the catalyst. That's what they're, that's what they're looking at. That's what the market thinks they're looking at. So once we get some weakness in the labor market, that could very likely be what pushes us up above 2000 for good because we want to get a two at the beginning of the gold price which will lead to a three at the beginning of the silver price and again you know it once that gold gets to 2100 it, it's going to be a rocket ship to 2600 could it happen by the end of the year possibly i don't think it's likely what i'm what we really need to watch is that we get gold sticking in this high 1900s range okay hey if it doesn't stay you're going to be okay we're fine the long term thesis for the silver and gold market r remain so yeah we got the, and i laugh because we've got we've got this jerome i'm almost done talking about jerome but he's telling everybody there's no recession there's no recession there's nothing you know there's nothing going on my friend let's rip let's rip on the fed just a little bit more what do you say my friend john little over at the Pickaxe, P-I-C-K-A-X-E, Substack. If you want to do some great reading, subscribe. I'll put a thing in the, uh, a link, a link a dink dink in the description. Okay, John's a very smart guy when it comes to precious metals. A great writer, does unbelievably in-depth research. Uh, again, I'll put a link to that below. But I want to read you just a couple interesting, he really laid into the Fed. He says, the Fed is a secretive organization that... Ron needs to ring. We got 200. 200. Our old friend Joe F. <laughs> Cowbell. <laughs> One of the loudest cowbells on the face of the earth. The Fed is a secretive organization that is not accountable to the American people. That would be me and you. It does not release its full meeting minutes. I didn't know that. They keep stuff in secret. I'm telling you, they're talking about their... That guy is talking about stuff behind closed doors that would blow our minds okay that's the reality the little bit that they feed out to us in his press conference and i didn't get to watch it but he usually looks like a scared cub scout when he's up there and i don't blame him i don't like public speaking either that's why i do this in the basement to try to i've been doing it for two years trying to get over my fear of public speaking i still get nervous i'm nervous right now but nonetheless what he's telling us jerome is the tip of the iceberg okay and it's bs it's like he's they're pushing a little turd up through the water don't believe it okay it does not release its full meeting minutes or financial statements and its members are not elected by the public this lack of transparency allows the fed to operate without oversight <laughs> and to engage in corrupt practices this is what our friend John is saying. Here are some specific examples of the Fed's sinister and sneaky behavior. Sinister and sneaky. I love John. He's a good guy. We're going to have him back on the channel. The Fed inflated the housing bubble in the early 2000s, which led to the Great Recession. The Fed has bailed out Wall Street banks. Oh, I can feel my blood pressure going up on multiple occasions while leaving ordinary americans to suffer the consequences of the financial crisis yeah nobody went to jail over the financial crisis over a bunch of dummies like these are these are these, these are supposed to be like smart wall street bankers that were buying all these toxic mortgages just so they could make a little bit of profit and make a little bit more bonus and nobody went to jail no one guy went to jail one guy there should have been hundreds of them in iceland they put them all in jail and good for them and now iceland's economy is strong there was no consequence whatsoever for the great financial crisis oh there was a consequence average americans a lot of them lost their homes right talk to people maybe you know somebody right there are a lot of people who lost their homes because of what happened during the great financial crisis absolutely there were other consequences like all those bankers they all got bailed out wall street all got bailed out they all got to make 
make record bonuses, you know? They brainwash Americans into hating anything that's good for social, like like universal medicine or anything like that. But at the same time, guys, you got to realize what we're gone through in the last 20 or 30 years. And I know I'm on a stump right now. I'm going to quit. I promise I'm going to quit. But what we've gone through in the last 20, 30 years in this country, we've had socialism, all right. Absolutely, we've had socialism. It's been socialism for the big corporations and the wealthy elite. They've sucked in all the money. They're richer than they've ever been. Okay, all right, I'm done. The Fed has kept interest rates artificially low for many years, which has enriched the wealthy at the expense of the poor. <laughs> Thank you, John. Uh, the Fed has used its power to manipulate the currency to benefit Wall Street banks. The Fed has played a major role in the central bank warfare model, which has been used to crush developing economies and to enrich Western banks at the expense of the poor. Um, all right, that was from our friend John Little. Like I said, I'll have a, a, a link to his sub stack where you can read more of it. It writes something about silver and gold every day. Great stuff. All right, breaking news. Woo, woo, we got a news break. We got a problem. <laughs> I'm almost going to get out the sign. I'll get it out. I don't know why. I don't usually use goofy little props, but there's no goofy props down here, right? Like a bear with blindfolded bear or a blindfolded bear or anything like that. By the way, thank you to First Mining Gold, sponsor of The Basement. Without their support, there'd be no Ron's Basement. Okay. Canadian Gold Development Company. FFMGF is the stock symbol. There's links in the description of this video where you can get more information. 13 million ounces of gold in the ground in Canada and a lot more. And you can also reach out to Paul Morris, their director of investor relations. You can tell him you're from the basement and he'll treat you extra well. Uh, yeah, here, breaking news. Yeah, I don't do this very... That was a, uh, that was, came with my daughter Evelyn's um, uh, Halloween costume when she was like four years old. She was a firefighter. She was so cute. Always enjoy all the moments you can with your kids and your family and your loved ones and your friends. That, guys, is what life's about. That's what we're doing here. We got some great people in here. Um, uh, in the issue of privacy, I won't say who it is, but one of our members just had a new grandbaby. I don't know if he wants me to announce or she to announce that or, or not, but you know, that's what we're here. That's the coolest part about the basement is the community. Um, you know, yeah, we love silver and gold. We love everything else, but we love this community as well. So thank you to Jake's Custom Parts, Mary Radcliffe, Jim M, Annie Oakley, Coin Shop Chris, the one and only Coin Shop Chris, Tony Erickson, Jim, uh, uh, Annie Oakley, right? Uh, um, Sassy Silver, Dean R. I mean, you guys are awesome. All right. Now, we got breaking news. I promised you that. Remember, remember, we had record breaking GDP numbers in Q3, right? People were shocked. The only people that predicted that were the Atlanta Fed, okay? Now, the Atlanta Fed is saying something very different about what's happening in the fourth quarter. Let's dig into this because this could be the train barreling down the tracks. And you know what's going to happen when the train comes to, when the hens come home to roost, right? Uh, ba -ba, here we go. This is from Zero Hedge. It says, the party's over. <coughs> Turn out the lights. Atlanta Fed slashes the Q4 GDP estimate uh, down 2.3% to 1.2%. Uh, okay, all right, here we go. It says, remember, we mocked the, B the Bureau of Economic Assessment's recent report that Q3 GDP had hit a scorching 4.9% um, on the back of such laughably growth factors like surging inventories and government consumption and consumer debt. Guys, that, that, that record crazy 5% growth that we supposedly had in the third quarter was almost all attributed to government spending, which they're borrowing, right, $2 trillion deficit to do, 
inventory growth, and that's interesting because um, I have some great contacts that are in the in international shipping, national ship like logistics executives, and they're telling me that every all their their business is way down because people aren't shipping things. But what they're also telling me is that. There's a recurring theme when they talk to their, their business clients and they all say they've got massive amounts of inventory. That's what that points out. And we also know that the consumer side of it was all fueled by debt. It's all fueled by debt. Unicorn fart dust. Okay. Remember, this, this is the Atlanta Fed who predicted the great quarter last quarter is now predicting a, not a crash, but a significant downturn in GDP growth. Okay. Uh, we had the ISM, that was yesterday, that said the past relationship between the manufacturing PMI and the overall economy indicates that the October reading, which was only 46.7, corresponds to a change of minus 0.7% in real gross domestic product. Thank you, Tony. <coughs> Excuse me. They're talking about the GDP shrinking, okay? Translation, the economy is already in contraction, which would hardly be a shock since Europe is also in a contraction. China's economy is imploding. We almost got 400 people on here this morning. This is crazy. And the U.S. will never decouple from the rest of the world. And now it's the same Atlanta Fed, which last quarter stunned Wall Street with its 5% Q3 GDP reading and which just came out with its second Q4 GDP forecast, which is a doozy. At 1.2%, it's almost 50% below the Atlanta Fed's first Q4 GDP estimate. Okay? They're basically saying, here, bottom line, Bidenomics trend line that was so laughable, interrupted by the one-time artificial and debt-driven burst in Q3 GDP, is back to normal. We are heading to trouble, guys. Thank you, Jim M. <laughs> you guys, thank you for the super chats. Always super appreciated. Not at all expected, but super appreciated. Help support the channel, family, all that good stuff. Okay, that ridiculous economic boost that Biden tried to represent as being normal is now gone. Okay, next. Thank you, Mary. Recession, rate cuts, more stimulus, and so on. That's what we're heading for. Let me get back to this because there's a, a couple more interesting things we want to talk about. I want to talk about how gold and silver can actually go way up during uh, an, a rising interest rate environment. Okay, we I, we I, I have a new uh, insight that I want to share with you. Okay, Chris is out of ding dongs. All right, I got to send 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 Chris some ding dong money when we get done here. Coin shop Chris loves his ding dongs. You guys all know that. Okay, um, the economy is heading to big trouble. You can't have a sustainable, strong economy that's just based on creating more and more and more and more debt. The hens come home to roost, guys. If you as an individual just keep taking out more and more and more and more debt, eventually, eventually the bank says, sorry, no more debt. And the world is basically saying to the United States right now, sorry, no more debt. So the only option left will be for the Federal Reserve, and it's going to happen. It's going to happen. The Federal Reserve will have to start buying the debt again. Okay, right now they're selling debt, which is hurting the economy. They're shrinking their balance sheet. They're going to have to start buying debt again. That little bit that they sold is going to seem like nothing compared to when they turn the printer back on, right? Because that's the only option, because... Saudi Arabia says we don't we're not going to trade our oil for for dollars. China's going to get to a point where they can say we're not going to give you our products for dollars. They're becoming worthless. They understand. Thank you, Mary. <laughs> Boy, Chris is going to have a windfall today. They're going to understand and the only option left at that point with this mountain of debt which will have even higher interest rates because when nobody buys the debt, right, when nobody, the, the rate goes up and up and up, we're going to get the slowing economy. 
right? Because the rates are going to go. The market will push the rates up and up and up. Then have you heard of the term yield curve control? That's when the Fed turns on the printer, right? When And everybody else, all your sheeple friend, all the people that when you try to talk to them about silver, gold, the petrodollar, bricks, look at you like, like a deer in the headlights and say what uh did you did you see what the how the how the how the game went sunday and there's nothing wrong with talking about the game but people that just they're gonna wake up and realize that oh i wish i wish i'd realized this earlier and sooner because my paper money is becoming worth less worth less or worth less however you want to say it okay and then they're going to run to the local coin shop and you know what they're going to like we talked about earlier they're going to say, I need to buy, where do I buy gold? You'll say, go to XYZ Coin Shop, go wherever. There's not going to be any. That's why if you want to get some now, Pimbex, P-I-M-B-E-X, another generous sponsor of The Basement. Guys, again, this show is not possible without the support of the sponsors. Your support as well, generous support. But Pimbex is where I go when I want to buy. For me, it's silver, but they've also got great prices on gold and platinum, a wide variety of products available, okay? You want to deal with a bullion dealer who's trustworthy and has the best selection and the best customer service. Do your own research, okay? I only talk about companies that I either own stock in or have done business with. All right, but do your own research with Pimbex. I did mine. I actually found out about Pimbex from several of the subscribers that said, check out Pimbex. I'm like, Pimbex? This was like a year ago, and I did all my research, and they checked all the boxes for me, and my experience with them has been great. P-I-M-B-E-X. I think Pimbex is best, and you will too. Now, let's talk about, so we're going to have skyrocketing Interest rates? Oh, my God. Oh, you know, right? Because nobody wants the debt. Gold's going to go down when interest rates go up. No, guys. No, no, no. Because when we get when we get to that tipping point where rates are going up because the world is calling monkey on the United States' ability to maintain the real value of the dollar, and rates are going up because of that, the price of gold will go up right along with it. Remember earlier we talked about turkey? We're not talking about Thanksgiving turkey. That'll be here before you know it, right? Right, And don't forget, the day after Turkey Day, Black Friday, we got the world's biggest giveaway, the world's biggest Ron's Basement giveaway. There's a link in the description of this video where you can go register for the giveaway. But let's talk about the other turkey, the country turkey. And it's a big country, right? And let's talk about gold going up when interest rates are going up. Turkey's central bank has set their interest rate at 35%. Remember we talked earlier, we think possibly... They're, they're, they're borrowing money from Visa or MasterCard, maybe taking out a cash advance. I say that jokingly, and I feel sorry for the people in Turkey because at 35% interest rates, they've had very, very significant damaging inflation in that country. So at 35% interest rates, gold must be worth nothing in Turkey. Wrong. Look at the price of gold in Turkish lira. It is a parabolic... I don't have a I, I don't have a picture for you. Uh, here, I'll draw a picture. Here's what here's what the price of gold looks like in Turkey. Okay. Now, I'm drawing this one, and let's say this was two years ago, and this is gold. That's what it looks like. Okay, it looks like that. Gold has skyrocketed. It's almost like gone up seventy percent just this year alone. It's like gone up, I don't know, 900% in the last three years. So gold and silver can absolutely, absolutely skyrocket in an environment where, where, the, where, the, where the government loses control of inflation and loses their ability to, uh, to, to, to control the yield curve. Right? Now, the Fed will try to control the yield curve in the United States, but you know the only way they can do that is by printing, and that'll make the value. It's all about real value. All right? and let's, let's just remember this about the dollar. Under the best of circumstances, I mean, how the heck did this happen? How did we get in this situation? Where under the Andrew Jackson is rolling over in his grave right now. How did we get into a situation in this country where we're 
shooting for, we're shooting for our money to lose 2% of its value every year. They brainwashed us. They're brand we're like, oh, we hope we get 2%. We get 2% inflation. We're doing great. You know, that's like if you're a, a runner and you're training and you say, well, I'm going to try to run a mile uh, in six minutes. And, and every time I run every day, I want to get, you know, 2% worse. <laughs> I mean, how do we get in this situation? Why do we accept the fact that our money that we work for, right? That the, what 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 they've what they've instilled in us as what we will use to trade. How do we get to a situation where we accept the fact that I do work today and I make a hundred dollars and I decide I don't want to spend it for another two four years? That when I do spend it, it's going to be worth significantly less. Why can't I store the value now? Maybe that's why I just realized, man. Maybe that's why we like precious metals so well because. They do hold their value. Now, they fluctuate, and we've been through a rough couple of years, guys. We've been through some, but over time, they hold their value. Uh, let me see here. Hold on. I might knock the microphone over. What do you think? <clears throat> here. There's a beautiful one-ounce silver round. Actually, came from Coin Shop Chris. Look at that. Beautiful. If you go, let me give you an example. If my neighbor kid comes and says, hey, Mr. Ron, that's what they call me, Mr. Ron. Hey, Mr. Ron, I'll rake all the leaves in your front yard. And I pay him with, uh, oh, okay, Coin Shop Chris just threw a ding dong at me. I'll get to that, Chris. Give us a thumbs up, guys. That's what Chris wants me to ask. We got 400 people here. Can we please get some thumbs up? I don't know that we're going to get to 300 today, but it helps get the word out. And it it's much appreciated. So are the super chat. So is all the support. But this, my neighbor kid comes over and says, hey, Mr. Ron, and he rakes the leaves and he's done. And I say, do you want $30 or do you want this ounce of silver, right? Most kids are going to say, I want the money. I want the money. But the reality is if he takes the ounce of silver, he could stick it in his drawer, right? And he's only 11 years old. But when he turns 21 or 22, if he finds this 11 years later, right? What do you think it's going to be worth? It's going to be in real value worth roughly what it is today. It is. I'm I'm 100% confident of that. The $30, if he sticks that in his drawer and forgets about it, <clears throat> what's that going to be worth in 11 years, right? Well, I bet I bet the $30 won't even buy you a single cheap hamburger at McDonald's at that point. I don't know, guys. It's going to be interesting. Hey, I really appreciate this. Okay, we covered some key things about the Fed. The Fed's in trouble. The economy's in trouble. Okay, we got news from the Atlanta, the Atlanta Fed. All right, they're always right. They've been right. Tomorrow could be a big day again. Hey, I was wrong when I said it about yesterday. Well, but it could be has the makings, has the fixings to be a big day tomorrow for the metals prices. I got a sneaking suspicion, and this is just a sneaking suspicion, that tomorrow's going to be a really good day for the price of the metals. It doesn't hurt to be optimistic. I used to be more pessimistic, think, well, if I think the worst is going to happen, then I'll never be let down. But I I have a sneaking suspicion. Oh, my gosh, we have 200. We're going to get to 300 thumbs up. Hey, guys, we're going to get to 300 thumbs up in one last time, Okay. One last time, if you get me 300 thumbs up, I will do the nose ring. I will ring this with my nose, okay? Um, I just hope I don't injure myself like was happening uh, in the pre with the previous bell, but so far, so good. Now, we got 295. Can we get 300? 300 thumbs up, please. 300 thumbs up. Come on, come on, guys, and I'll do the bell thing. I was trying to be like an auctioneer. Tomorrow, big day. Big day. Tomorrow could be a big, big day. Could go the other way, but it could go good. And it doesn't hurt to be positive. It doesn't hurt to be nice, right? It doesn't hurt to think positive. And I'm telling we got 305 thumbs up. You guys are awesome. All right, one last time. <laughs> All right, one last time. I'm going to ring it with my nose three times. One ring for each 100 thumbs up. Okay, 
Susie threatened to divorce me, but maybe since I'm not wearing the red shirt, there's the red shirt, by the way, guys. Right there. Uh, I'll be okay. Maybe she'll unlock the basement door so that I can join you again. I may be uh, not live for a day or two. I'm going to do my best to keep up with you guys. I got a lot going on that I got to deal with, but I will keep you posted. I will be getting out new videos. Thank you. Thanks to the moderators, Annie Oakley, Coin Shop Chris, Jake from Jake's Custom Parts. Who else? Who am I missing? Mary Radcliffe, Jim M. And Jim M, by the way, I haven't mentioned this for a few days, was the reason why we're doing the big Black Friday giveaway. He sent a bunch of silver. We got, go watch the video, guys. There's a link in the description and do what it says. All you got to do is leave a comment on that little video that says, thanks, Pembex, and you're automatically entered. But now we've got like over 20 ounces of silver. We got some gold backs in there. Um, and don't forget, we're going to be doing another giveaway on uh, Christmas Eve Eve, which is a very special day for me personally. I'll explain more about that later, but we're going to do another giveaway. That one's going to be tied to the new ronsbasement.com website, which you're going to want to visit once we get that all up and running. Have a great day. I'll see you soon. Thank you, everyone. Thank you.